it's a pleasure to be up here today. You know, I, I, I can't help but feel very inadequate, you know, after following people like Dr. Larry that taught last week. You know, he's so knowledgeable about God's Word, and uh, I love hearing him teach. John's a wonderful teacher, and but uh, I want to try to share something with you today that you can use this week in your life. Uh, Reed's sermon kind of tied in really well with what we'll be looking at in Psalms today. But uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer for just a moment. Lord, I pray that you would lead me in this Bible study today. Lord, I pray that uh, I would share only what you would have me to share. And Lord, that I would share things that would, would help us as we walk through life with you. Lord, bless us now, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, the, Matter of fact, the, the lesson today is about God deserves our praise and worship. Uh, if you haven't noticed, this fall, and uh, we're having one of the most beautiful falls uh, as far as leaves go and the turning of leaves that we've had in a long time. And, and I love the fall season. I love the leaves changing, and, and I, I love just walking in the woods and looking at things and, and praising the Lord uh, for what he's blessed us with. I love to take my grandchildren on walks and uh, emphasize to them that God has given us all of this, you know, all of this. We love fall for a lot of reasons. Uh, the leaves change colors, the weather gets cooler, it's nice early every morning, and then football arrives, soccer's here, basketball starts. Nell and I didn't have, we, didn't, we had one night off last week, Wednesday, but uh we go to basketball games, we go to soccer games, sometimes we go to two on the same night. We, we made a girls basketball game and then flew down to Hattiesburg and made a boys soccer game. But we're blessed to be able to do that, to follow our grandchildren. But you know, uh, you watch people when they're watching sports and uh, you know, uh, you, uh, you have a lot of fans at these games, and sometimes they get carried away, you know, with the shouting and hollering and so forth, you know. But uh, by the way, you know where that word fans comes from, don't you? Fanatic. We're fanatic. <laughs> you know, if you think about it that way, you know, you kind of want to calm yourself down. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I think it's something in us, though. You know, we'll all jump up and holler or we'll clap or whatever. But uh, there is something within us that wants us to uh, give adoration and praise, you know, or, or to praise kids for doing well or whatever. But nothing or no one deserves a praise that we should stand and give our Lord each day. And uh, so uh, we want to draw our attention to that today as we look at... Uh, Psalm 99. The first three verses there says, The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned between the cherubims. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. He is holy. Well, in verse 1 here of Psalm 99, we're prompted to praise God for his holiness and his great power. And uh, we see the psalmist paints a picture here of uh, how great God is. And he, he said he alone reigns. He alone has the authority to reign over the earth. And he says, uh, he, he provides a, a picture there of God sitting on the throne and, and uh, he, he's... Uh, has a picture as well of the people that come before him. It says uh, uh, he is enthroned and let the peoples tremble. Uh, now that doesn't mean that we're terrorized by God, but uh, I think you know that it means that uh, we have a complete reverence for our God when we come before him. We see the picture of him sitting upon his throne, uh, a very special place between the special class of uh, angels there who are cherubims that have come they, they sit there by him uh, and in verse 2 the psalmist says uh, 
the reality of God's greatness points to Zion. He is exalted above all people. Uh, of course, uh, Jerusalem was the principal place of worship and, uh, and the center of worship for the people, uh, the nation of Israel back in, in that time. But it was often referred to as the city of Zion. So that's why the psalmist uses the word Zion here. Uh, originally, Zion was a fortified hill within Jerusalem, but uh, it's referred to uh, the same way you would refer to Jerusalem a lot of times. Uh, the God didn't intend for his reign, though, to be limited just to Israel. You know, in those days, uh, a lot of God's people uh, nourished the notion that he cared only for Israel. You know, uh, we don't need to be too critical because a lot of times uh, we get to thinking that the United States of America is all that God cares about. Uh, we think he's just our God sometimes, you know. So we're kind of like the people of Israel was in that day. They, uh, Their perception was, you know, that... Uh, uh, people who weren't Jewish, or w God was, was not their gods, you know. So the uh, psalmist counters here, and he says, uh, all people everywhere shall be exalted. Uh, he shall be exalted. So uh, he towers over every empire in the world. And the same message is for us today. Don't get to thinking, you know, that he's just the God of the United States of America. If he is, he's mighty disappointed in us today, isn't he? But, uh, of course, he is our God, but he's God over all nations. And I've been to a few different countries. I've been, uh, uh, I think I counted at one time, I've been in about 18 different countries. Uh, I couldn't uh, visit a lot of people in some of them. But anyway, uh, people love God. And you can see it in the people no matter where you go. Uh, but then in verse 3, uh, the psalmist says uh, that let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. He is holy. The invitation to worship God was not limited to just the people of Israel, but it was to all people everywhere. Then we move into uh, verses 4 and 5 in, chapter, in Psalm 99. It says, the mighty king loves justice. You have established fairness. You have administered justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow in worship at his footstool. He is holy. Uh, verse 4 here, we are prompted to praise God. Uh, he's God's people, uh, you know, we treasure justice. I know uh, uh, God's love uh, flows from a perfect blend of his wisdom and compassion and his justice uh, hangs over all of us. And uh, the psalmist wanted us to understand why he loves us and why he is a God of justice and fairness. Uh, he you, you know, there's a lot of examples in God's word of how we as people should live and uh, how we should treat other people. And uh, and this is one of them. You know, we ought to uh, treat people with uh, fairness and justice. We ought to be, as God's children, we ought to be known for that, haven't we? We ought to be known throughout our community, throughout any place that we go, as being a people of righteousness. Uh <clears throat> You know, when we give our life to Christ, he makes us right with him. And uh, we have received that gift of salvation, and uh, uh, so we need to live like it uh, through faith in Christ. Without God's involvement, uh, justice and righteousness would never have been a, a reality for his people. Uh, but because of that boundless love and limited strength, the nation of Israel, uh, referred to as Jacob uh, here, uh, enjoyed these two treasures. Uh, you know, when you, you think about uh, 
the characteristics or the signs of our Heavenly Father, uh, you know, they are an example. Uh, it's always an example how our Heavenly Father treats us is how a father ought to be uh, toward his children, toward his family, you know. And I think about that a lot of times, you know, God is a wonderful example for that. One of the things that Reed brought out in his sermon this morning, you know, was uh, maybe you've been called to leadership uh, and God uh, puts people in places of leadership and he is a wonderful example for them to follow there. Uh, I, I think about leaders uh, throughout my life, you know, we had, uh, I, I love President Reagan. May, many of you may have felt the same way about him. He was a wonderful leader, I thought. Uh, in the Army, my battalion commander was Linton V. Beasley and uh, Colonel Beasley. He was, a, he was a wonderful leader, and he was a wonderful example of, of a Christian man that was in a place of leadership in the military. And uh, it's not always the case. It's not always the case in civilian life, is it? But uh, Colonel Beasley, he would always give us these uh, talks, you know, and uh, he was just like a, I don't know how much older Colonel Beasley was than us, probably 20 years at least, but he would give us these talks and uh, he would talk about how we ought to uh, care for one another and how we ought to uh, be there for one another. I know uh, one of his favorite speeches that he made to us, he said, when your brother is down, don't step on him, pick him up, pick him up. And that's a, a wonderful example of how we ought to live our lives each day as we're serving the Lord. Uh, the, uh, the psalmist goes on to say, he says, you know, this righteousness and justice is, is one very good reason why we need to exalt and praise our Lord. Uh, we ought to bow before him, he says in, these, in, these, in the last verse five there, but bow before him and worship at his footstool. Many of the kings during this day and time, these people would have known exactly what he was saying. Many of the kings had a footstool. And uh, those kings would write, probably carve in that footstool or write on it somehow the names of nations that they had conquered that were under their feet. But uh, when you go to uh, the Lord's footstool, the sim symbolic footstool for the Lord the, the, is uh, that he is over all the earth. He is over all the earth, and we need to go before him and, and worship. Uh, his footstool is a symbol of authority for the entire earth, and, and that is our God. Uh, all right, then we're going to move into the last three verses there and talk about them for just a few minutes. Uh, verses 6 through 9 in Psalm 99. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those calling on his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in a pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their sinful actions. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. Uh, God's people are, are prompted here to praise God uh, because he answers our prayers. And that's, uh, I'm sure everyone in here could give a testimony about how God has answered prayers in their life. Uh, one of the, uh, this is kind of off the subject, but I, I'll share it with you anyway, but uh, uh, one of the verses in the Bible says that God knew us before we knew him. And uh, I think about that a lot of times. Uh, when, I, when I was in the Army and we, uh, uh, we had gone from basic training, we were going to advanced infantry training, and we had a line going down through there, and all the guys that I was in basic training with was in that line, you know, and we were moving along there. 
And we got up there pretty close to the desk where they stamped something on a piece of paper and handed it to you. And, and this uh, lieutenant called me out of, to the side there. And uh, believe this or not, uh, he had looked at my test that I took. And uh, he said, I'm impressed with your IQ and I have, you know, we pull people like you aside. We want you to go somewhere else. So I was very disappointed at first because there went all of my friends that I was in basic with. And if, if you're in eight weeks of basic training with somebody, you get to know them. So uh, they were going this way, and then Frank goes this way. But uh, he put me in a uh, headquarters company, and uh, it was a, a, a very good training company. And, uh, and then uh, I, went to, uh, I went to Germany, and uh, Nail was able to come over and be with me. And uh, if I had about an hour where I'd tell you about what I did in Germany, it wasn't just that I was in Germany. Uh, I was in a, a very elite unit that went a lot of different places, a lot of different places. We spent our whole time uh, watching Russia. I asked my sergeant when I got over there, I said, uh, you know, we were all trained to go to Vietnam. Why, why am I here? And he said, uh, you need to understand that your country is more concerned about Russia than they are Vietnam. Well, I didn't know that, and that was kind of disappointing me at the beginning. But uh, anyway, we spent 18 months uh, keeping an eye on, uh, let's see, it was Brezhnev that was there then. It wasn't Khrushchev, he was gone. It was Brezhnev, Lenoid Brezhnev. So uh, I had a very interesting tour flying in and out of uh, different little countries, uh, mostly at night. And uh, the equipment on the helicopters were not near what they are now. We had what they call blackout lights. And uh, I don't know how those guys could see how to fly those things, I'll be honest with you. But anyway, I kind of got off track there, but I just wanted to say to you that that uh, God knew me before I knew him, and he was, he was taking care of me. And uh, so when I got home back here and got out of the military is when I was, I was saved. But I always think about that, and I think, you know, how good God is that uh, he took care of me before I even knew him. All right, I don't know how I got off on that, but... Uh, Moses and Aaron are mentioned here in this uh, first verse. Uh, of course, Reed was talking about how they were, the people were in the wilderness and uh, traveling through the wilderness. And uh, Moses and Aaron prayed to God, and God answered their prayers, you know, and, and he guided the people. He gave them something visible to see, uh, the cloud that they could follow in the wilderness. And then uh, down here a little further, he said he answered the prayers of the generations of Samuel. Old Samuel, you know, he was uh, uh, he was kind of a, an assistant or a clerk to the priest Eli, and God called Samuel to uh, be over the children of Israel and, and guide them and lead them. But uh, one day, as happens with, with all people, if we live long enough, we grow a little older. Samuel grew old. And the people came to Samuel and they, they said to him, you know, Samuel, you're old. And apparently your sons are not going to be the followers of God like you were. Samuel had appointed them judges, but the scripture says that they didn't follow in his footsteps, did they? So uh, they said, you know, uh, your sons are not going to be leaders. And we want a king is what we want, Samuel. What did they, they tell him? Everybody else got a king, we want a king, you know. So uh, Samuel uh, gave him a king. And uh, so, that, was that Saul, Brother Glenn? Saul? So they got their king. But Samuel is there with them, and he's an old man. And, and the older you get, should be the more you know, shouldn't it? Of course, you may get to a point where, where you forget it all. But... Uh, uh, Samuel told the people, they were all excited about the king, you know, that they were getting the king. And they, uh, he looked at the people and he thought, 
you know, they've almost forgotten about God and what a, a wonderful God he is and how powerful he is. So it was in the harvest time. It was in the fall of the year, and they were harvesting the crops. Dry weather, wonderful time to harvest the crops. Samuel said, I'll just say this to you. If you and your king don't follow God, you'll be made a, bit, a big mistake. And he said, I'm going to show you how powerful God is. Even in the dry time of the year in harvest, he called upon God to send thunderstorms and rain. And the people realized. They realized then how powerful God was, and they realized that uh, he answers prayer. He, uh, he listened to Samuel. So... Uh, the scripture goes on here to say that uh, we need to exalt the Lord our God. Bow and worship at his holy mountain, mountain for the Lord our God is holy. Uh, he told them, uh, let me get down here, I skipped around, I've been in the army and everywhere else, but uh, he said he is a forgiving God he deals with our sinful actions. And this is so true today. Now, he's talking to people a long time ago, but they, God is speaking to us through these words today. He gets personally involved when we make mistakes. Uh, he deals with it, addresses those situations, but uh, he, he'll do what's necessary to hold us accountable for those mistakes that we're making. But he's a wonderful and loving God that, uh, that forgives us and we can repent and be forgiven of our actions because uh, God involves himself in the life of people, of his people. And uh, we ought to lift him up in worship all the time. We ought to uh, uh, go to the holy mountain, it says here, and that's where the people met to worship during that day. Well, what does that say to us today? We ought to gather publicly to worship him. Now, you know, you always hear that person say that, uh, well, I can worship God at home. I don't have to go to church. I can be fishing and worship God or whatever, you know. The, the, God's word tells us to get together, doesn't he? He says, uh, you know, public worship. We ought to all come together. We all get together at those ball games and, and uh, let out praise, don't we? We need to, to get together and worship and worship God. Uh, God is, uh, is a wonderful, loving Father, and he's set apart from all creation, but he is he's very involved with his people here when they have repentant hearts and he can answer their prayers. Uh, you know, we ought to stay in touch with God every day through the study of his word and, and through prayer. Uh, you know, people say, well, I'm, I'm awful busy. You know, I just, maybe I don't have time to pray, spend a lot of time in prayer. I'll tell you a few ways you can, uh, you can pray. At work, you can be in an attitude of prayer about something that's on your heart all day. When you're driving down the road, wonderful time to, to pray uh, if, if I'm in a vehicle traveling by myself and going down the highway, you know, you can praise to God and thank him for the day that he's given us. Thank him for so many things. Thank him for family and loved ones. Thank him for our, a wonderful church family. And uh, you also have a time to uh, pray for others, intercede for people like we did this morning. You know, the, the prayer list is long. A lot of people that we can intercede for. You can also, in a certain way, pray during conversations. You ought to be, uh, uh, your conversations ought to be in such that, that, that they would, uh, people would be able to see that you're a praying person. And then uh, another good time is wherever it may be, uh, when life gets quiet, when times get kind of quiet, you know, it's a wonderful time to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, the lesson today says God deserves our worship and our praise. Uh, 
like I said, we give enthusiastic praise to a lot of things in our culture today. But no one and nothing deserves our worship but the Lord our God. And he's worthy of, of more than we could ever think to give him. Okay. Uh, any comments, questions? Thank you all for staying with me today. And uh, uh, I'm grateful for God's word that, that we can study it and, uh, and learn more about him as we do that. So let's have a word of prayer as we go. Lord, thank you for this uh, brief time that we've had this morning to look at Psalms. Lord, uh, we do praise you and lift you up. Lord, I, I pray that you would bless our church during difficult times. Bless all those that were mentioned on our prayer list this morning for one reason or another. Lord, I pray that you would uh, see us through this pandemic that we're in. Lord, I pray that very soon uh, this virus would be gone and things would be back to somewhat normal. Lord, we love you and we praise you for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.